Since I'm starting out with trying to, um, you know, achieve my goals with studying and um, learning the LSAT mm -hmm. test, I just want to be successful and, you know, I guess create obtainable goals where um, I get into a good school because I'm here in New York City. And um, I guess that's it. Yeah. Okay. So where do you want to go to school? What's your goal? What's your dream school? My dream school is Columbia or NYU. Okay. Because I live in New York City, so I wouldn't want to go out. Sure. Out of state. So. And those are great schools. Those are really top five schools. Yeah. So that's awesome. So for those, no matter what your GPA is, you ideally want to have 170 or above on the LSAT. Yeah. And when are you looking to take the LSAT? Do you have a test date in mind? Um, yes. I want to take it in July or August. Okay. That gives you a good amount of time. We're talking right now in January, and it takes about five to six months to reach your fullest potential on the LSAT. So that lines wow. up perfectly. Wow, pretty cool. So what, what, what's your schedule like between now and then? What else do you have going on? So I'm a full-time worker, and then mm -hmm. I have like some other responsibilities in the evening. But um, my job is very flexible, where I can, I can spend a certain amount of time studying. Like if I start really early at work, and get everything done, then I have the whole afternoon free to study or to spend time doing something else. And I'm just on, on call for, you know, something, if somebody needs something, so. Right, fantastic. So you really have a lot of time available to you to study. Yeah. Good, awesome. So I'd say just get one of my study plans where I lay out exactly what to do for you every single day over the course of your prep and you'll have time to make full advantage of it. You could probably study at least 20, 25 hours a week or more, given, given your other obligations. So that's great okay. to hear. Okay, awesome, 24 hours a week. Wow, okay, awesome. Yeah, the LSAT requires a lot of you, but you get in what you put out, you know? So put in the time, treat it like at least a part-time job and really make it your focus. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have any advice for me or anything that I should take as a starting out? Absolutely. So. The study plans will lay out exactly what, for you, what you should be doing every single day, which books to read, which exam problems to complete, and the exact order in which to do everything. And my biggest advice would be don't focus on the foundation first. Build that. Don't worry about timing just yet. So start with learning the theory, then applying it to questions by type, then pull it all together with full sections and then full exams but do the questions by type first so that you can see the common techniques required for solving each one. Okay. A lot of folks will just fall into this trap where they take exam after exam and measure their results. Then they're happy or sad about those results and they move on. I call this the obsessive practice exam narrative, open. They're obsessive about taking those practice exams and measuring themselves with spreadsheets and charts and seeing if the numbers go up or down doesn't matter though. What's important is what you learn from completing those problems during your review process. But you'll get to that later. For now, just focus on figuring out what the different question types are and the techniques you need to apply to solve each one. Okay. Okay. But that'll, that'll answer really all your questions about what to be doing. But get your hands on the most recent practice exams. Use the study plan to make use of those exams along with the articles and other free resources I have on my site. Okay. Great. What other questions do you have for me? Um, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm going to try really hard to study, to follow your study plan and to be consistent. One of the things I lack is consistency and I like get, you know, I have a lack of focus because I have um, sorry, so many things going on, as you can see. So my focus is always like, I'll try to spend time studying and then a call will happen, like as you can see just now. And so I'm going to try and push to stay focused and committed to doing, you know, what I need to do to be successful. Right. So, yeah, totally. So if you were to, for example, put your phone on airplane mode while you were studying, would that work for you or would that be not possible? Is that impossible for some reason? 
Well, the thing is, because I am um, a property manager at my job, and so even if I take the time, the hours to go and study, you know, I'm still on call just in case something happens. If our maintenance guy has like a repair, I mean, I don't get like a lot of calls like bombarding me at one time, but there will be like a call like every hour or something. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's say down the line, you want to take a full length time to practice test, which takes about three hours of uninterrupted time. And ideally for 170 plus to achieve your fullest potential, you want to do at least 10 sittings like that before test day. 10 three-hour study sessions doing full-length five-section exams. But if you're getting a call on average once every hour, those interruptions are going to render the results of those practice tests less than accurate. So let's talk about this now for a minute. How are you going to make those sittings happen without interruptions if you had to? Mm. Maybe I would take my timed exams in the evening time where it's not going to interfere with work. And then yeah. I'll just devote like three to four hours in the evening or even on a Saturday. I have the entire Saturday to spend studying and devoting my time to, um, you know, the LSAT and just making myself better at it. Nice. So Saturday is your day when you're not on call? Yeah. Awesome. So Saturdays should then be your practice test day, where every Saturday for the final two to three months, you're doing a full length five section timed exam. And you're doing it at the exact same time you'll be doing it on test day. And you mentioned on other days, maybe the evenings, but your exam will probably be in the morning. They'll be typically, they'll either be at 8.30 a.m. or occasionally around 1 p.m. So Ideally, you want to take your tests at the exact same time of day so that you can get everything else lined up as closely as possible to your test day experience. So let's say you eat breakfast at a certain time, you eat lunch at a certain time, you drink coffee at a certain time. All of those things affect your body and they affect your mind as a result and they'll affect your energy level. So you want to figure out the exact rhythm that you want to have on test day and simulate that beforehand. Okay, cool. Anyway, I'm really glad we were able to connect. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, the biggest insight was um, that the time from now until the time that I want to take the exam, um, you said there's about four to, four to six months where you can achieve your biggest potential. So I have more than enough time to do that. As per se, I stay focused and I dedicate time on like a Saturday morning ideally when, you know, we're going to take the test to, um, to have, you know, on, um, distracted time, you know, I eat my phone. So I'm going to focus on not having my phone present when I'm taking an exam. So that way I can be better at it. And also I learned that, um, if I use your study tips, that will be very helpful to me as well. Your study, um, schedules and study tips and everything that you sent in your email. Awesome. Great. Well, I'm really on your website. Able, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm really glad I was able to help. Please keep in touch and let me know if you need anything at all. I think as you, you have forward. some videos too, right? I do. Yeah. So I have the LSAT Unplugged YouTube channel and podcast as well as the LSAT blog website. And I also have a ton of advice on the LSAT Unplugged Instagram and the Elsa Unplugged Facebook group. So I try to have as many mediums as possible to connect and share information. Awesome. I'm definitely going to use that as well to help. Awesome. Well, feel free to reach out if you need anything at all. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to explain everything to me. And um, I mean, the little questions that I did have, I do feel that they were very informative and I did take a lot back that I expected to. So I'm really grateful. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Glad to help, Crystal. Have a good one. You too. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.